All right, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe it's April 4th. Uh, today is April the 4th. We're doing our weekly update, uh, driving through Canada uh, to Alaska during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we're going to do things a little different today. I'm going to use Zoom because like I told you, I'm a hillbilly without a lot of good equipment. I'm going to use Zoom to present a map. I get asked a lot about fuel stops, but before we jump into that, so I, that, that way I can present my screen. Uh, before we jump into that, let's go over some emails. And before I even get started with that, I want to say that my grandmother's uh, last week, for the people that watched last week, um, I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of texts from people saying, you know, telling me they're sorry about my grandmother. I just want to thank you for that. That means a lot. She's, uh, she got the, her vitals got to doing a little bit better. And uh, now she's, today she's not doing so hot. So we might not have a meeting next week. So she's 92 and stronger than most of us. So that might be why we keep, keep uh, kicking it here. Right? <laughs> she might outlive all of us. But thank you for your prayers. It meant a lot. And I'm at home. My wife's actually off today. Um, so for a flight attendant to be off on the weekend, that's pretty awesome. But when she gets in the kitchen, it sounds like somebody doing construction. So if you hear boom, 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 that's my wife in the kitchen. Um, so just go over the, I didn't have that many emails again today. So we might end up just moving to like once every two weeks, but for now we're doing once a week. And if you've not tuned into my channel before, please subscribe. If you like the video, please give me a like. If you don't, shoot me an email or put in the comments what you want to see different because I'm trying to make this for everybody. So basically, I have several videos of different tips of driving to Alaska through Canada during the pandemic. And because of everything changing, I wanted one place that everyone could meet at. So if you've never watched any of my videos before, every week, every Sunday, I'm uploading a new video. And I'm having I'm hearing from a lot of people like I heard from Patrick last night. Um, Patrick's driving up through, uh, I think he came from California, if I remember right. And he's actually crossing the border today hopefully he's already across he'll be going up to should be driving to grand prairie as we speak um he's going to let us know how it goes but i don't think he did the covid test because he could prove he had just gotten over covid so um so he's going under that loophole so we'll get to hear from patrick hopefully tonight and i'll update you on next video but i'll at least hear from him by the time he gets here i haven't heard from anybody this week that's made it up or that's even tried to make it up so i don't have a lot on that but uh, we will be updating weekly on everyone's experience. I look forward to hearing from Patrick. Um, I heard, I got an email from a gentleman by the name of Robert, lives here in the same town as me, as, as uh, Palmer. He says, we're driving back to Alaska from Texas. We are Alaskans with our home in Palmer. I read we are considered essential and do not need a negative COVID test within 72 hours. Should we still get one? Uh, he says, should we still get one in Billings on the way through? Um, the answer is so to be essential let's all right technically i'm a pilot technically my, my wife's a flight attendant um if i'm not driving through alaska in the capacity of a pilot you know it don't matter what you do for a living it's kind of like well uh, i used to police uh so if i'm not policing you know i can't get out here and and run red lights and and uh you know i can't get out here and and, and do on my off time in my personal vehicle that I would do in a police officer's car. Cause I'm not run, you know, I'm not going to a call. Uh, I'm not acting as an emergency vehicle, you know, just because I'm a police officer don't give me the right to on my off time to go out here and, and, you know, pass cars and run red lights. And, and I mean, you know, you're running code and you're using due caution. I mean, I'm not, I'm making it sound more harsh than it is, but you know, as a police officer, an emergency vehicle, an emergency call, you have the right to break laws. Uh, you technically can even be on your phone texting now. Do I agree with that part? No, I really don't. But anyway, as an emergency vehicle, you do. You know, I mean, you are on your laptop checking tags and that and the other. But I can't get in my personal vehicle and put a laptop in it and go down the road on my laptop because I'm not acting in that capacity. Same thing goes with going through Canada. The only people I know that are truly considered essential are truck drivers in a truck driving through up to Alaska. That's considered essential. The trip has to be essential. Just because you do an essential job don't mean you're essential. I hope that makes sense. Um, so my my answer to him was yes, get the COVID test. I can I'm hearing they're really tough about what they consider essential. And the only one I know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they're letting that they're considered the trip essential is the fact that you you know, truck drivers. So for example, you know, if I, I needed to get up here and, and I work for an, an airline, I'm not, I don't fly for the airline, but I work in management for the airline. It's a very central job. It's a 24 seven operation. So if my work needed me up here, Canada's going to look at it. Well, if you're so essential, get your butt on a flight and fly up there. 
Uh, so they're not, my trip wouldn't be considered essential. I hope that makes sense. Uh, another email that I got was from uh, Tiffany down in Florida. And uh, she was, we were talking about the test. And I said, well, the downside for, for coming from Florida is that, you know, a lot of people are taking the test, the COVID test in their hometown prior to reaching the Canadian border. But keep in mind, the test has to be submitted. So you have to do the test um, 72 hours prior to getting to the border. So that's kind of a problem coming from Florida. Tiffany says that her and her husband can be up there in, in, in way less than 72 hours. They hope to be up there in a little bit over a day. Um, I checked the mileage and God knows if they, if they do, they deserve, they need to be truck drivers. They'd be making a lot more money. Uh, just, and I don't doubt they can. I've done, they're in their twenties. They got more stamina than I do. Now I want, I don't want to, I don't want to be in that vehicle no more than 10 to 12 hours a day. I want a nice hotel at the end of the day. I don't want to sleep in a freaking car and I want a nice meal and I wouldn't mind a nice cocktail at the end of the day. I mean, after you, that's like working. I'm going to tell you. So when I got out of high school, I started policing and then policing and in, in, uh, this was in Georgia and it didn't pay nothing. It was a wonderful, cool job, but it didn't pay hardly anything. So then I got a truck driving job part-time. I was moving mobile homes part-time. I was tr delivering trucks for a Volvo dealership in Atlanta part-time. I was teaching trucking at a state college part-time. So trucking was like my, always been like my part-time gig. And I uh, did that the whole time I policed, I truck part-time. And then I went and worked for this trucking company. Uh, it was a multi-billion dollar LTL company, less than truckload company. I worked for them for a little while, mainly part-time as a driver. I worked for Delta Airlines and maintenance for a little while. I got in as a maintenance planner. Um, then I became a regional safety manager at a trucking company. And I actually, my regions that I covered, I covered several states. I covered in a company car and um, so in and now I'm back working for an airline and eventually uh, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing now. Just started this new job in management at this local regional airline. I'm loving every minute of it. I plan on doing this for a while and then I'll, then I want to go to flying airplanes uh, full time for a living. So I'm still flying. I'm working on getting my flight instructor rating now, but I'm saying all that to say I have a lot of experience traveling. I've traveled extensively in airplanes and I've traveled extensively in cars and I've traveled extensively in trucks um there's not much trucking that you can do that I haven't already done I mean I've done a lot of trucking a lot of it was my part-time gig but I have done some of full-time but I, I, I've done a lot of trucking so trucks are planned out so when you look at a mileage or you look at Google and I want to throw this out there because this kind of will answer Tiffany's thing which I know they say they're going to make it almost non-stop and if they can man good god they're better than I am um but anyway it wears you out it's literally I'm telling you, I think I've, I read after 20, after 21 hours of being awake, you're like, you're like the level of 0.04 of, of alcohol. It wears you out. That just driving is the hardest thing. It's harder than if you roof your house almost. I mean, it really wears you out in time. And when you're going to be doing this for 4,500 miles, you really got to pace yourself. It's kind of like running at a track. I can't get out here and run as fast as I can in the first lap if I got to do 10 laps, because by the time I get to lap seven, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to run. Right. So you got to pace yourself. So trucking companies on average, and, and I, and I'm not, I know you're not trucking, but if you're going up, if you're moving up to, if you're going up to somewhere like this, you're probably pulling a trailer or you're in a U-Haul. It's worse than being in a truck. A truck's air ride. They're really comfortable. They have air ride seats. It's probably the most comfortable vehicle you could ever travel in is a, is a truck. So in saying that, Really, we should learn from trucking companies. So the average trucking company will not plan out more than, say, 600 to 650 miles a day max per trip. Now, they operate under different guidelines. They have different things they have to fall under. And I get all that. But they, they uh, are something we can learn from. So in saying that, um, I try to not plan my trips more than 600, 650 miles. Can I do more than that? Yeah, I've done New York City to... To, um, I've done Manhattan all the way to Muscadine, Alabama, and I did it in a truck. I did it illegal, but I did it in a truck back in the day. But do I, that was in my 20s. Do I want to do it now? Heck no. I don't at all. So in saying that, when you look at the map, it, so it might say, oh, you're 27 hours away. 27 hours away could be three days away. Okay, that's what I'm getting at because it could be two and a half days away at least because but if you plan out a 10-hour driving day, so look at the miles and divide it by 60. That's a good average because that's counting in your stops, your stops plus you're pulling something so you're going slower. So divide it by 60. If it's 600 miles, you divide it by 60, that's 10 hours of drive time. By the time you stop for gas, stop for the bathroom, stop and get something to eat, 
even if it's just to go, that's a 12 hour day. I'm sorry, 12 hours in a vehicle, you are spent, you're exhausted. You need to get off the road and, and sleeping in a vehicle is not the way. So I'm explaining all that to say, because a lot of people that don't have a lot of travel experience, I'm getting a lot of different questions. I'm, I'm just pointing Tiffany's email out, but I'm getting a lot of questions. And you know, she's uh, she sounds so energetic. I can't wait to meet her and her husband. They're probably going to pull some cool off, but it wouldn't be for me. But I got faith in them. They'll probably make records that no one's ever made driving up to here. Um, but anyway, I do want to point that out. All right. So I get asked a lot about gas stops. So let's go over gas stops. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to use in the next week. I'm going to, we're going to talk about lodging. All right, let's share this screen. Okay. So what I've done, if you can look here to the left, I punched in Shelby, Montana to Palmer, Alaska. Cause I told you guys, there's a best Western Shelby. That's really nice. It's like the only decent hotel in Shelby. Shelby's a small town. I love to stage my first night in Shelby, Montana, which is just north of Great Falls. Um, I get asked a lot, why not go through, you know, up here north of Seattle? I think there's another uh, crossing you can do right here. What is it called again? I get asked a lot. This is the other one that you can go up. Why don't I recommend this way? And the answer is I've never went that way, number one. Number two is I've talked to about 10 people that have went that way. And during this pandemic, everything is closed. And that goes against my rule. It falls right back into the fact I don't, I want somewhere decent to lay my head every night and I want to eat decent. And I want to have a decent time. So um, I feel like that's more important to me. So, all right. I get asked a lot about gas stops and the route that I take. So let's just go over that here in, um, here in Google maps. I recommend you using Google Maps. I've got AT&T, Verizon. I used to have Verizon. I don't miss them. I know a lot of people love them. Verizon, I don't know how they work in Canada. I know, actually, my wife and I switched back to AT&T the day we were driving up, um, literally. We stopped at the AT&T store on our way up in Montana and swapped our phones back to AT&T. You know, as much as we like to travel, we go to Mexico a ton are we used to a ton and we're going to go back to doing a ton. Our AT&T phones work incredible in Mexico. They work incredible in Canada and they work incredible everywhere we go. And I love AT&T. So uh, T-Mobile works pretty good on this route. My mom came up with us. All I can tell you about is T-Mobile and AT&T. So let's jump into this. If you've got one of those phone carriers, I do recommend making sure you're going to have phone service. Um, I think Verizon will charge you a daily international rate. And that's Verizon to me, they just rape everybody. But anyhow, um, Make sure you got service. I do recommend using this Google Maps app. It's incredible. It's very accurate. It works great for this trip. That's all I've actually ever used. I've never used a GPS for this. So I'm going to start my day in Shelby. I always recommend starting early. I'm going to get up here to this is couch that I talk about a lot. This is Sweetgrass, Montana, and this is Couch, Alberta. That's where you'll clear customs. So I'm just going to follow my Google Map all the way. You're going to come to the left bridge with this cool town. There's some, oh, geez. There's some, um, this thing's not moving like I want. There, uh, in left bridge, there are some cool, uh, what is that called? Uh, I'll think of it in a minute. You'll, Tim Hortons. You got to get you some coffee and donuts at Tim's. All right, so I just come right through Calgary. There's normally not a lot, a lot of traffic. So when you get to right here, just south of Red Deer, when you get north of Calgary, it's going to try to get you to get off. This is another recommendation of mine. It's going to try to get you to get off right here. You're going to be coming up this highway and it's going to try to get you to get off right here. And I've done it. I've done it once. I'll never do it again on Highway 54. What I recommend, and I've done it both ways. I've done it more the way I'm about to tell you. Just keep staying straight on two. Just keep straight and straight on two. When you get north of Red Deer, it's going to keep trying to put you on this road. And what happens is it just zigzags you to death. There's so many stops and stuff. It cuts out a little bit of miles, but it don't cut any time out. So go straight. Keep straight on this, this highway, too. You're going to pass Red Deer. When you pass Red Deer, Google Maps will finally recalculate. And what it's going to do is it's just going to run you up to here around their little perimeter road, which all this is interstate. And then it's going to put you out to here. And then you're going to... I get gas somewhere right in here. And then 
it's going to have you come right up here and join in 43. So we'll go to there in a minute. So that's my advice. That's another tip that I have is just stay straight. Take this all the way to Edmonton. And right before you actually get to truly get to Edmonton, Google Maps will run you this way right here. All right. So this part is about getting gas. Just get gas when you need it. Me personally, I'm anal about it. I, if I get a half tank, I'm getting gas somewhere. It's no different here than the lower 48. You get gas however you want on this day. And then this is Grande Prairie, Grand Prairie, whatever you want to call it. It'll bring you into here. This is where I like to stay my first night in Canada. If you're starting in um, Portal, this would be your second night in Canada if you follow what I would recommend. Remember, once you leave Dawson Creek, your options are extremely limited. So I like to spend the night at the Hampton Inn and Grand Prairie here, Grande Prairie, I call it Grand for whatever reason. Um, and I'm gonna go over lodging next video. I don't wanna waste too much time on this one. So then you're the next morning you're gonna get up day two, you leave Grand Prairie, you're gonna come up to Dawson Creek. When you get to Dawson Creek, fill up. And from this point forward, and Dawson Creek is a cool town, you'll want to get out at the sign. There's a little sign there. That's, that's where the Alaska Highway starts. It's a neat town. You'll want to get out and do all the touristy stuff. But definitely, um, definitely fill up gas here. And from this point forward until you get into Alaska, you fill up with gas at every single town. I'm, I mean, I'm being serious. All right, so you're gonna fill up in Dawson Creek. You're gonna start your day in Grand Prairie if you do my recommendations. Dawson Creek would not be a bad place to spend the night either. That would be another good one. Uh, and then in less than an hour, a little bit over an hour, you'll be in Fort St. John. And I gas up here again, even though you're not gonna need gas, even in a gas guzzling U-Haul, you're not gonna need gas. But I gas up here at Fort St. John. Um, and when you leave Fort St. John, I'm trying to think, and I've got a sheet we'll go over that I will be happy to email you. You're gonna come up the road, you're gonna fill up. And before I, while I'm thinking about it, you definitely, I recommend having at least two to three five gallon gas cans of your own gas, just in case one of these cities, because once you leave Fort St. John, there is nothing, I mean nothing. Um, and there's nothing in between here, but you will feel normal through here. But there is a fuel stop a hundred miles, 120, no, hang on. 186 kilometers, if I remember right, south of Fort Nelson. So probably somewhere in here. And I've got a sheet that I'll show, show you in a minute that I'll be glad to email you that I made for another guy. I've got the exact location. But anyway, somewhere in here, you're going to see a fuel stop. You're going to see one up on the hill on the right, and you'll see a place on the left. I always stop at the one on the left. I don't guess one's better than the other. I'm just a creature of habit. So I always stop at that one. Fill up there. Um, and then you want to come up to Fort Nelson, you'll fill up again here. And once you leave Fort Nelson, there is nothing. If you're having any kind of car issues whatsoever, there's a really good mechanic shop in Fort Nelson. The guy that owns it, super honest. The kids that work there are absolutely incredible. I, I made friends with them having a vehicle that had some trouble. So, uh, and now I'll stop and bring them Tim Hortons when they come through, they're great people. So Fort Nelson, you want to fill up again. And then your next stop would be Mucho Lake right here. Remember, I talk about, and I, they're not, I don't get any money if you stay there or not. I'm just being honest. There is nothing when you leave Fort Nelson. So if you're going to plan out, if you're like, oh, we're going to drive till we get tired, you can't do that on this drive. I cannot stress that enough. You have to plan. It's super critical that you plan. Um, so when you come up to, to Fort Nelson, let's just move this out of the way. When you come up to, I'm sorry, when you, when you leave Fort Nelson, you're going to lose cell phone signal and you won't have it again until you get to Watson Lake and then you won't have it much after that. So it's good to have that little satellite thing. You will have in and out of signal all of it at Fort Nelson. But once you leave Fort Nelson, it's, it's toast. It's gone. This is a beautiful drive through here. And Muncha Lake is Northern Rockies Lodge. This is the absolute perfect place to spend your second night if you're coming from Shelby, Montana, or your third night if you're coming from Portal Lake. It is so incredible. There's zero options until you get to Muncho Lake. There's zero options from here until you get to uh, Watson Lake. Remember, I always say Watson Lake is a dump. So I do never recommend going to Watson Lake. So I, so what I do here is I always at least have three five gallon cans. Uh, the first time I overdid it, I like Clark Griswold. I had like six or seven of them. Three's perfect. So I had three, last time I did this, I had last two times I did this, I had three gallon, Three, 15, three five gallon cans, 15 gallons. I spend the night at Mucho Lake here. Absolutely, this place is just beautiful. Um, and it's called Northern Rockies Lodge. They have a great restaurant. And 
I, what I do is I take my 15 gallons I have, I fill my vehicle up. And then if you stay there, you get 30 cents a liter off. Um, and, but they still, it's higher than aviation fuel. It's extremely expensive, but you're literally in the middle of nowhere. There's no, there's not even internet here. So, um, I mean, they have satellite internet, but it's, it's not even usable hardly. So anyhow, I do fill up here, make sure you leave here topped off, but I use my 15, my three, five gallon cans here because it's not that far. And you're going to go to this little contact Creek. Let me see if I can find it here on the map. I think it's somewhere. I think it's right in this area. Anyway, it's going to be really close to here. I don't even come up on the map, but it's called Contact Creek. But it's about 40 miles before you get to Watson Lake. And I fill up there. You're going to see it. It looks like a mom and pop truck stop on the left. It's a tiny little house looking thing. And it they have they do have the cheapest gas. It'll have a sign, cheapest gas around. And it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it is. So when I stop there, I fill my three five gallon cans back up remember that a full tank's way more than enough to get to contact creek and i fill those three five gallon cans back up at that location and i love to support the mom and pop people especially during this pan pandemic this i don't know whatever you want to call it but anyway it's the government's just killing every business in the world so especially during all this stuff i love to support the mom and pop locations and i fill up my three five gallon cans there i fill up my vehicle there if depending on how many miles a gallon you're getting, you can't always top off again in Watson Lake. I don't recommend spending the night here. It looks like a dump. There's not even a decent hotel in the whole town. Um, yeah, and there is one little gas station on the right, so you can get gas there. I normally just fill up that place and it normally gets me by, but it is close. So the next gas station is going to be, and at this point, when you cross into Watson Lake, you're actually, when you're crossing the Watson Lake, you're actually coming into um, uh, Yukon. And remember, they got the insane restrictions. You got to go through a checkpoint and all that good stuff. It's not a big deal. When you get to Tesla here, this is the next place to fill up. So my next fill up, after I left that uh, Contact Creek Trading Post or whatever the heck it's called, you'll stop here in Tesla. There's, there's two places. I've, I've always stopped at the main one on the left. Never had any issues. And their gas prices are not crazy considering where you're at. Um, and I fill up there. And then when you leave Teslin, that should be enough to get you to Whitehorse. And then you get up here to Whitehorse. Now, while we're talking about Whitehorse, I do, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people, we're not, they are, they're still doing the checkpoint in Watson Lake. They're still telling you don't stay in Whitehorse. You can stay on the highway. There's not a decent hotel on this highway. You'd have to go down into the town of Whitehorse. All your hotels are down in here and we're not supposed to leave this highway one at all. I'm hearing a lot of people doing it and not having any issues anymore. Um, but it, technically Canada's insane. They just, today's Easter, they just tried shutting a church down. By the way, happy Easter. Uh, in Calgary, I saw a video where they're trying to shut a church down because of COVID. Um, it's just insanity, if you ask me. But anyway, um, so they definitely will. But anyway, I leave Whitehorse, fill up Whitehorse. I always stay at Haynes Junction. And this is my next fill up. So I fill up again here in Haynes Junction. I've been staying at the Cozy Corner, which is a hotel right here. And when you leave Haynes Junction, this road will beat you to pieces, but it's probably the beautifulest part of the whole highway. As you can see, you've got all these mountains here. It's just beautiful. And what I do is I go all the way up to Beaver Creek. So you can make it from Beaver Creek from Haynes Junction on a full tank of gas. Beaver Creek, that is that fuel there is like buying worse than aviation fuel tremendously i stop in beaver creek right before you get into beaver creek there's a rest area on your left in fact it's right there i just happened to luck up and pull it up i guess um i stop in here and i fill my car up with those three five gallon cans that i have from the cheap gas from contact creek and then you're only 109 miles from toke alaska so once you leave beaver creek you'll check out and then you'll drive a pretty good little ways uh before you cross the border the check station's like right here and then You'll drive, a, uh, you'll drive another good 20, 30 minutes and then you'll cross into the United States and then that's where you'll go up to the border and then to Toke, Alaska. And once you get to Toke, there's a place called Fast Eddie's on the right. That's a good place to eat. There's some free bears to get gas and so forth. And the rest of it, you know, you'll need to get gas in Glen Allen right here if you're going down to 
to Anchorage or Palmer, and then you'd have enough to make it. But that's what I recommend for gas stops. I get asked that a lot, but plan your route. And we'll go over lodging next week. I think we'll think that'll make more sense. I'm hoping sharing this map makes sense. Let me see. There's one other, one other document I would like to share with you guys. Let's see if I can find it. Let me just see if I can pull. And I, if you want it, I will email it to you. Let me see if I can share this. As you can see, I'm still a hillbilly with this thing. All right, let's see if it'll let me share it now. I do want to, no, it's not going to let me, I don't think. Yep, maybe. Yep, here we go. Okay, perfect. So um, I wrote this up, and this, I just copied this. I wrote a, I, I helped the guy plan a whole entire route. Charles, you hear me talk about Charles. I need to, still haven't met him. I need to meet him. We still talk though. Uh, from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I helped him plan this whole route. But basically, I went over to gas. And there's one thing I want to hammer in. You've probably heard me talk about it in some other videos. Is when you pull up to a gas pump in, when you pull up to a gas pump inside of uh, Canada, it'll ask you, do you want to fill up? If you hit yes, it's going to hold 300 bucks on your credit card. Some pumps are 250, some are 300, and or you can pre-authorize the amount. So if you did that 10 times, it's three grand held on your credit card. You haven't used near that much in gas. So what I recommend doing is while you're in the states, figure out how many miles you and I are going to think in gallons. Figure out how many miles a gallon you're getting. So let's take a simple math. If you're if you're pulling something, you're probably getting 10 miles a gallon. Or if you're in a U-Haul, you'll be lucky if you're getting 10 in a U-Haul. U-Hauls are horrific to drive in. So anyway, if you went 150 miles, so I always reset, reset my tripometer. If you've been 150 miles since you filled up, and your average, and let's see, you went 150 miles since last fill up, and you're averaging 15 miles to the gallon, and you need 10, then you'd need 10, 10 gallons in this example I gave. A liter's three, a liter's 3.78 gallons. I just add up 3.8, so you're going to do 10 gallons times 3.8 equals 38 liters. I think most time it's 25, 50, 75, 100, or fill up. Um, so I would just would pick in this example, I would pick 50 bucks. I put 40 here. A lot of times they don't let you authorize just 40, but $50 in Canadian. So you'd figure up the price of fuel. So in this example, I put a dollar four. So you'd do a dollar four times the 38 liters, get your answer. And basically 50 bucks would fill that up and you're not held a lot on your credit card. So here are the fuel stops. I said, get after, get fuel wherever the heck you want, all the way to Grande Prairie. After Grande Prairie, you'll fill up everywhere going forward. So I fill up in Dawson Creek. I broke it all the way down to Palmer. So fill up in Dawson Creek. I fill up in uh, about three hours north of there. There's a place on, and I forgot to put Fort uh, Fort St. John. I should have put, this should be number two. Fort St. John's next. And about three hours north of there, it's at the 186 kilometer. You'll, there, it's, it's, no, it's 186 kilometers south of Fort St. Nelson's what it should be you'll fill up. The next one would be Nelson. I have this wrong. And then at Northern Rockies Lodge, I use my own gas and top off with theirs. At Contact Creek, I fill up using my gas jugs. At Tesla Trading Post, I fill up. Whitehorse fill up. Haynes Junction fill up. In Beaver Creek, I use my own gas here and fill up. In Tote, I use the Three Bears. Glen Allen, I, there's only one place. You, you can't miss it. And then Palmer, uh, I'm there. Those are my fuel stops through up the highway. That's why I prefer this route. I got plenty of gas stops, as you can see, and I've got plenty of lodging. And next week we'll go over lodging. And that's what I have for this week. Please, uh, I want to do this video to, I want to do this video to benefit you guys. Give me things you want to know. I hope these tips are helpful. Um, please let me know anything else you want to see. Uh, any information that you have, I hope that helps. I get asked, I've been asked several times about showing it on a map. So that's about the quickest way I could think of. So I've never thought about being a YouTuber. I've never thought about making YouTube videos. And I never thought I'd have a hundred and something people watching me every week and watching my tips and my videos. And I've had so many people compliment me and it's been the most awesome thing. And I appreciate every one of you. Thanks for your uh, prayers. Thanks for everything you've done for me. Please send me an email. So my email again is bigskyblessing at gmail.com. Again, bigskyblessing at gmail.com. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up so it makes it more shareable to everyone else. If you don't like this video, shoot me an email. Tell me what you want me to do to improve it because I'm trying to make this 
good for everyone. I want it one central location for everybody. I look forward to talking to all of you. And again, please, my email address, bigskyblessing at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. I do want to hear from you. Let's stay in touch. I want to hear about your trip. I'm here to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much and have a good day.